Hello everybody, it's Wyvern here with a, another bit of Total War, Warhammer 2, Cool Week Match gameplay. This time around we are on Excavation Site, playing as the Tomb Kings against the Vampire Counts. And uh, this was a match that was requested, and this used to be a match that was very favorable to the Tomb Kings, and that's putting it probably mildly. Uh, between the ludicrous power of Hyro Titans, Necro Sphinxes, War Sphinxes, healing from Necro Techs and healing from Arkan, Vampire Counts basically stood no chance, and um... Yeah, you'd be basically screwed if you got put up against the Tomb Kings. It was, it was in my opinion, legitimately an unwinnable matchup as long as the Tomb King player was uh, decent. Uh, the, that said, with the changes, the, the huge buffs to make the Blood Knights, the fact that the Terror Guys stayed the same while literally, or basically the same, while literally every other single model entity got massive nerfs in the, the Resurgent patch, those, those few facts have kind of, and the fact that Arkans lost his healing, have kind of, those facts have come together, coalesced, to make this matchup a lot tougher, and it's a little more of a fair match now. I'd say it's about probably probably about even. Uh, but regardless, from from my build here, I actually kind of gone back to the roots of how to beat vampire counts with a lot of single monsters. Now I got two higher titans here as well as the Sphinx of Usef. Uh, they're backed by double Necrotects. Only one of only one of which has all the abilities. Uh, the plan is, of course, to stay together. One of them does have uh, simply the uh, restore. The other has restore. He's got his. Uh, Trying to find him here. He's got Restore, he's got the Stone Shaper, which gives you extra armor. He's got Vampires of the Sun for minus 9 melee attack. Now, don't be fooled by the plus, minus 22% flame resistance. I recently found out that this only affects units that have flame resistance to begin with, so it doesn't affect others. And then Wrath of the Creator, which is a nice boost to melee attack and, uh, and weapon strength. Unfortunately, he's not close enough to both to get the benefit there. For our Lord, we do have Arkham the Black, who does have uh, quite a few spells. He's got Spirit Leech, he's got Purple Sun of Zerus, and Soul Blight. I figured my opponent might end up blobbing, so for that, the Purple Sun will be really nice. Our Tomb Blade of Arkham for the summons, Staff of Nagash, just to get our wounds magic up, and of course, Libra Mortis. It's a nice, safe buff. Otherwise, a bunch of chaff for our front lines, a bunch of Skeleton Warriors, just to stall my opponent, two Skeleton Spears. We do have the Sphinx of Usev here in the background. To provide some additional damage output, uh, and especially deal with large units like Terrorgeist, units like the Red Duke, or in this case, the Shirt Ghoul King, <coughs> the uh, Six of Usa can deal with them all. Now, Roy Pony decided to go very wide and a uh, bit of an old, almost, this is almost the more old schooly build uh, for Two Kings or for Vampire Counts as well, uh, something you'd see back in the day more uh, with. Crypt, crypt horrors. Nowadays, crypt horrors have once have which kind of had a little bit of a niche in this matchup have completely fallen out of favor once more, and I think they're trash. But um, for his front line, he did do a mix of Kynexine stalkers, as well as grave guard and some sternsmen, and uh, yeah. So these guys will easily trash my front line. The second line of skeleton warriors isn't really a threat, but you know this front line is more than adequate to trash all of this. Nevertheless, the build my opponent does a Strigo Ghoul King as well as a Terror Geist. Strigo Ghoul King is coming in with Invocation of Neck as well as his variant of Raised Dead, which raises Crypt, or Crypt Ghouls. He also does have Bloodlust. Then we do have Blood Knights and then the Double Crypt Horrors. So quite a potent anti large contingent, potentially. And a much more mobile one than mine. It's important to keep in mind that higher Titans can't flex where needed, really. Um, which is one of the problems with them. But uh, we do sally out here a little bit. And uh, now we're going to pull back and withdraw. I do believe this build is actually tournament legally because you can have three, potentially three big units. You can see we're immediately pushing the Sternsmen. This might seem like a very stupid idea, but my figure, my logic here is that the Sternsmen are vulnerable to fire. They are by far the biggest threat on the battlefield in the long run, and so if I can knock them out quickly, it'll be much more beneficial than say knocking out a simple graveyard quickly or killing slide stalkers quickly. So we're diving in here. We're going to start beating these guys down with our higher titans. You can see immediately they're down about four miles. Their fire vulnerability being a huge boon for me. Uh, the Necrotech's in there as well. You can see those laser eye beams just melting the skeletons. Uh, so some good stuff. In the back of the meantime, once again, just using those spears as a zoning tool, um, forming up here to block off my opponent's uh, lines of advance. Necrotech, unfortunately, taking a bit of a beating. Uh, this guy doesn't have the Vambrace of the Sun, so he's not debuffing the melee attack of the guys nearby him, like over here he is. But you know, we're getting some good value. Uh, we're very quickly able to melt my opponent. You can see we've got summoned some skeleton warriors over here uh, from Arkin, who's also in here in the fight. We dropped up Libra Mortis, which honestly probably a bit of a waste. I should have saved it for an attack. And now we're going to start dropping our Spirit Leeches. Both higher Titans have a bound Spirit Leech, uh, so we can kind of just pressure my opponent's lords with this. And my opponent here, you can see he's in a bad spot. He, he doesn't really know what to do. Um, now he's going to summon some Crypt Horrors, and he's going to make a move on my higher Titan. So you can see we've already used one Spirit Leech. Uh, now we're going to follow up with another. And we're going to charge here. And 
you can see we're going to start getting pounded a little bit. He's definitely brushing our higher titans. Fortunately, they do have over 9,000 HP, so you know they don't really care too much uh, in the short term. Uh, they're pretty tanky, and they do have the buffs coming in from the Necrotech, which gives them more armor, giving them a little more survivability, melee stats, all that good stuff. Uh, and we're going to be able to fight these troops off pretty effectively. You can see the Sigur looking down a bunch of HP, and he's certainly regenning. We're <coughs> but we're able to keep harrying him with Spear Leech, which is nice. Over here, these Skeleton Spears will just absorb the flank. Uh, unfortunately, you can see our Skeleton Warriors that are getting demolished. Uh, we are actually getting our Shopti Summon at this point, I do believe. And uh, so we're going to be able to apply some pressure to these guys' backline. Over here in the meantime, the Sphinx of Usef has kind of dealt with most of these Cryptars, which is really nice. Though unfortunately keeps getting retargeted by the surrounding crap. My opponent is kind of getting a bit of an isolation here on my higher Titans, which is not what I want. Um, it's really bad for me, because the higher Titans, while definitely very solid melee combatants, if isolated, they will start falling apart. And uh, although I haven't used my uh, heals yet, my uh, restores, uh, the higher Titans can certainly take, they can take a pounding, and they can, but... You know, they can fall apart. And you can see this guy's already down about 3,000 HP. Uh, this guy's already dropped about 1,000. Fortunately, the Sphinx of Usef is over here to just dive in and harass them a bit. Certain men over here are finally going down. They actually last a lot longer than I anticipated. Uh, it took a lot longer to bring them down than I had hoped. Uh, unfortunately, I've kind of lost my infantry line at this point. This this pocket over here, completely wrecked. Uh, I've, these spears are still holding up, but they're isolated. The Oshapti isolated over there. Uh, so I actually used my Tomb Blade of Arkin to summon some Skeleton Warriors on top of myself, because the key to this, the key weakness of this build is if your monsters get isolated, you are screwed. There's there's no two ways around it. Um, yeah, your monsters are going to get wrecked if you, if you get, if you start getting isolated, if you start getting uh, opened up to cycle charging from units like Blood Knights. You can see these Blood Knights, though, they're sitting out here all the way on the flank doing nothing. They really need to be here in the fight, uh, but we're able to tear apart these summon Crypt Horrors. We are applying some pressure with the Higher Titan. Most of these units are not huge to this, the higher Titan. With 50 melee defense, he's more than and 110 armor, even the Skeleton Spears are going to do nothing. Uh, so it really needs to be the Terror Geist, it needs to be the Ghoul King doing the work. And uh, as you can see, unfortunately, uh, as they dive in, they're uh, going to get beaten down. And you can see the Terror, the, 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 due to Spirit Leech Spin, the Ghoul King has already gone down. Uh, the Blood Knights are going to dive in here. We're actually going to drop a Purple Son of St. Roos here, which is going to start melting these poor guys. Um, you can see it kind of jumps up and then, of course, being a Vortex, does goes exactly where you don't want it. But over here, Sphinx of Zeus have isolated a bit by the Blood Knights, and you can see just how badly it's getting beaten down. It certainly restores helping it. But Blood Knights, when they get the full surround, they're doing a lot of work. They've got Monsters Bonus versus Larger 22. Uh, they're, they're really, really a strong unit. And uh, the Sphinx of Zeus have not in the best spots, but uh, at this point, my opponent is going to start simply falling apart. His Crypt Ghouls, his Crypt Horrors are just dead. This Terror Guys can't do very much. Uh, he's got no support because his lord is dead. And uh, the uh, monster squad just stands strong at the end there. As my opponent doesn't decide to GG out. So, if you're looking for ways to beat vampire counts, this would be my recommended method of doing it. Fighting them in... Uh, and I'll, I'll try to kind of summarize why. Fighting them in the infantry fight is not going to happen. Uh, Graveguard, although Tomb Guard is pretty solid, honestly, in melee, they're, they're actually a very respectable unit. Um... Without some serious magical support, with Soul Blight or something along that matter, they're not going to be able to take on the Graveguard. They're going to simply lose. Uh, there's there's no no way you're going to win that fight. So, um, because Graveguard just has good armor, so Graveguard will hold and slug it out with you pretty efficiently. And plus, the Vampire Counts do have access to Sturdsman, who are just such, such a good tank unit. Uh, and they've got better options for cycle charging your infantry and stuff like that with Blood Knights. So I think you're never going to really get to win the infantry fight, so it's not really worth trying to win the infantry fight. Uh, you can, it's doable, but I, I but I don't think it's the key aspect to this battle. Uh, the key aspect is doing as much damage as possible to your single entities before your opponent hits. Now you can try to do shooting, you can try to do Shopti, you can Shopti Great Bows. Um, you can try to utilize... Uh, giant, boat and Giants, but personally I don't like that, and the reason why is because Vampire Counts are really good at shutting down backlines, they've got Blood Knights, which, the thing is, like, you try to, they can summon up, if you're trying to def do a defensive box, your opponent can summon up Skeleton Warriors, trap, crap like that, to disrupt your backline, they can harass your Ushapti, uh, and if your Ushapti are forced out of the defensive box, or if, for whatever reason, your uh, defending backline, backline defending troops are bogged down at that point by summons, then units you know, like Blood Knights will just take your Shopti to Pound Town. Terror Geist, they can just cycle charge and destroy your Shopti. So I'm not really a fan of those strategies where you try to either shoot the Vampire Count down, 
or you try to slide out in the infantry fight, which really only leaves one option, and that's, in my opinion, uh, this monster squad. Now, you don't have to do it this way. You can bring a war sphinx, you can bring necro sphinx, you can honestly go with tube scorpions as well if you want to go budget. Uh, there's plenty of ways to do it. I personally like the higher titans because you get the free spirit leeches, and you get some very respectable uh, melee stats with fire and magic, which is both great against vampire counts. Uh, sphinx of Usef is another favorite of mine. This is about half your army wrapped up in just these guys, but... Uh, um, I think it's a very solid staying power. I, I wouldn't say it's a guaranteed win. If you're a Vampire Count player and you're thinking, oh my goodness, this is ridiculous, this is OP, uh, honestly, there's plenty of ways to beat this. I would not be discouraged. Um, I can quickly hop on over and show something that I think would work against that sort of build, or something I would probably run against that build. Uh, let's have Vampire Counts, and I've got to fight the Tomb Kings. Uh, let's say we bring Manfred. I'll throw him on a horse. I don't really care to put him on a dragon. Uh, we'll dump everything here, except like this. We'll bring our, we'll bring that. So we've got a two thousand gold. Arcan. We've got two thousand gold. I almost called him Arkin. And then, for the rest of the army, we could bring. Well, there should be a few a few ways we could do this. Uh, definitely front line. I would say Sturmsmen, triple up Graveguard, for example. Uh. Feasters in the Dusk, not a bad choice for Backline Harass. Um, double up Blood Knights, and then we've got a little bit, little bit of points left over. So at this point we could either get a Terror Geist, which is not a bad choice, or we could get like a, two Vargulfs, which are also not a bad choice in this matchup. Um, and honestly, this sort of build can work against that. Now you might think, oh, but these guys are fireball. Well, they are, but you can cycle charge quite a bit. You've got 50 mobility, you've got 50 charge bonus, so you can cycle charge them in and out. Uh, the key with this, uh, with the key with this build is to show, show a little bit of patience. Um, let your show a little bit of patience. Uh, take your time. Win the front line fight. Get get those monsters isolated, and then then beat them down with cycle charging, beat them down with monsters, bog them down with summons. There's so many ways you can do this. Um, there's, other, there's, other way, and there's other ways you can take this as well. You can dump a Vargul. If you could bring like Dire Pack, because they're not a bad choice either, uh, for backline harass and disruption and all that sort of stuff. If you're worried about backline harass, you can like double up on Felbats and bring uh, Dire Pack. Personally, I don't, I'm not the biggest fan of that. I personally like to just charge in with Blood Knights and get shit done, but uh, you know, you can do, you do what floats your goat, but um, there's a lot of ways you can take this, uh, this build, and this cop. I wouldn't really bother with dragons just because there's a lot of ways you can easily get, let's say, beaten down by Tomb Kings and shot down. And I personally prefer a horse, it's just cheaper and just, just about as efficient. Uh, but yeah, with this sort of build, you can spam Spirit Leech on important targets, you can cycle charge with your Blood Knights. If your opponent, keep in mind, if your opponent brought a cop like the one I brought, and you've got a comp with, like, double Vargulf and all these Graveguard. You're going to stop my front line, there's no way, and you can do it incredibly quickly. Some cycle charging from Blood Knights, ignore the monsters at first, get rid of the Blood Knights, and perhaps have Manfred chip away at the heroes. If you can snipe, if you can see a Necro deck too stronger, uh, who has got more buffs on him, like what I had there, snipe away at him with Spirit Leech over time, with Manny. Um, and slowly but surely you can just chip away at him. Uh, and I, I think this is the sort of build you, you'd want. Uh, might be. But yeah, uh, otherwise you can do Terror Geist, there's a whole bunch of stuff, but, I, but this would be an example build of mine. Uh, so I do hope you guys found this build uh, helpful. Uh, I know it was requested, and so I wanted to kind of show show you guys some tips and tricks on the matchup. Um, I, hopefully from both sides a little bit. Uh, for Tomb Kings, I would definitely do single monster builds. If you're vampire accounts, I'd probably do something along these this line. So I do hope it was helpful. If it was, be sure to leave a like, subscribe, comment, all that sort of stuff. Uh, if you guys have your own comments, your own criticism, your own input, oh, once again, just don't mes don't hesitate to post. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. Uh, as usual, I do appreciate you watching, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye for now.